In this segment, we will talk about acid and bases and acid and base chemistry. Now, acid and bases are all around us. For instance, citric acid, which is the component that gives lemons their acidic flavor. Another example of an acid is acetic acid, which is the main component in vinegar. Or hydrochloric acid, which is an example of a strong acid. An example of a base is ammonia, which is used to clean surfaces. Or baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate. Or sodium hydroxide, which is caustic soda. Now, to understand acid-base chemistry, let's look at the following example. An acid can be understood as a proton donor. It is a compound that can donate a proton to something else. This something else is called a proton acceptor. And a proton acceptor is a definition for a base. So when you bring an acid and a base close together, they can exchange a proton. The proton goes from the acid to the base. Based on this chemistry, we can define acids and bases. The brunstedt lowry definition of acid and bases is as follows. An acid is a compound that can donate a proton. And a base is a proton acceptor. We know that there are strong acids and weak acids. A strong acid is an acid that completely dissociates into protons and the corresponding anion. An example is hydrobromic acid. Hydrobromic acid dissociates into protons and bromine anions. There are six major strong acids you should remember. These are hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. Weak acids, on the other hand, do not completely dissociate into protons and anions. Acetic acid is an example. It splits into protons and acetate anions. However, this is a reversible reaction. That means that only part of the acetic acid molecules will be dissociating into protons and anions. The same is true for bases. There are strong bases and weak bases. A strong base is a base that completely dissociates in solution to form OH- anions. An example is sodium hydroxide. It completely dissociates into sodium ions and hydroxide anions. A weak base does react only partially in the solution to form OH-. An example is ammonia. Ammonia, when it interacts with water, produces the ammonium ion and OH- anions. However, again, this is a reversible reaction. That means that only part of the ammonium molecules will give rise to hydroxide anions. Now let us look at some basic acid-base chemistry. Let's look at hydrochloric acid that's reacting with potassium hydroxide. In solution, hydrochloric acid produces protons and chlorine anions. Potassium hydroxide produces potassium ions and hydroxide anions. The proton is the acidic species. The hydroxide anion is the basic species. These two can interact to form water. In addition, we have spectator ions. These are potassium and chlorine. We can rewrite this reaction in form of the net ionic equation. We find protons interacting with hydroxide anions to form water. A special case of this reaction happens when the amount of protons and the amount of hydroxide anions is exactly the same. In this case, we speak of a neutralization reaction. In a neutralization reaction, the amount of base is similar to the amount of acid and they completely neutralize the solution. Here's another example of acid-base chemistry. This is sodium hydroxide that is reacting with acetic acid. In this solution, the base is the hydroxide anion, and the acid is acetic acid. The hydroxide anion wants to pluck away the protons from acetic acid to form water. In addition, there's a spectator ion, which is sodium, and we form the acetate anion. Now, we know that acetic acid is a weak acid. However, in this case, this is not a reversible reaction. That is because it is interacting with a strong base. The strong base 
wants to take away all the protons from the weak acid. Let us finish this segment by looking at the following equation. The interaction of perchloric acid with magnesium hydroxide. And we're asked to write down the molecular equation, the complete ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. So let's start with the molecular equation. On the reactant side, we find perchloric acid and magnesium hydroxide. Now note that magnesium hydroxide is an insoluble salt, so it's a solid material. The hydroxide component wants to interact with a proton from perchloric acid to form water. In addition, we have magnesium perchlorate. This equation, however, is not yet balanced because there are two hydroxide units on the reactant side and only one proton from the perchloric acid. So we need two perchloric acid units to form two water molecules. Now the reaction is balanced. Let's move on to the complete ionic equation. In the complete ionic equation, all strong electrolytes are written in their form of dissolved ions. So we find on the reactant side protons and perchlorate anions. We also find magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide does not split into ions. It remains a solid because it's an insoluble salt. On the product side, we find water, magnesium ions, and perchlorate anions. To find the net ionic equation, we cross out all the spectator ions. Now note, however, in this case, that magnesium does not cross out because magnesium is part on the reactant side of the magnesium hydroxide. Only the perchlorate anion can be crossed out here. So the net ionic equation looks like this. We find on the reactant side the proton interacting with magnesium hydroxide to form water and magnesium cations.